Hi everybody and welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. There is one thing that Muslims get right and that we can all agree on. Nobody likes Islam. Even Muslims all around the world know that nobody likes Islam and I happily, completely agree with them on that. The problem is that Muslims get it all wrong when they try to explain why nobody likes Islam. Muslims usually argue that everybody dislikes or outright hates Islam and that this then shows that Islam is true or that Islam is great, which makes no sense. Or that people are jealous of the greatness of Islam, which is why they dislike and oppose and hate it, which is a little bit laughable. Or that when the disbelievers hate Islam, this actually confirms the Quran's assertion that the disbelievers will never like the Muslims and their religion, which in return then again proves that Islam is true. <laughs> I want to make this video quite simple and talk about 10 main reasons why people dislike Islam or why people have a bad image of Islam. Let's start. Number 10. Civil Wars Muslims or Islamic organizations are in one way or another involved in the majority of the ongoing conflicts of our time. Most notably, we have the ongoing Syrian civil war, the Israel-Palestine conflict, the never-ending conflicts in Iraq, the war in Afghanistan, the Yemen civil war, insurgent forces in the Philippines, Nigeria, and so on. Aside from civil wars, there has always been tension between Sunni Muslims and Shia Muslims, and there is currently an ongoing cold war between the Sunni powers and Shia powers in the Middle East. Islam has been torn by inner conflicts since Muhammad and especially since shortly after his death. When you look at Islamic history, it looks like Muslims have been at each other's throat forever. All this makes everyone associate Muslims or Islam with conflict and makes them wonder why these people keep fighting and killing each other. And that does not make it easy for people to view Islam as a religion that brings peace. Next we have the Dawah behavior, the behavior of the Dawah Gandists, the Muslim proselytizers and apologists. Muslim apologists and proselytizers are known as intrusive, rude, loud, vindictive, unable to handle criticism, self-righteous, and very quick to get personal and to attack. Whenever you see videos of Muslim apologists, even when you see people standing at a stand and inviting others to Islam, you see them try to humiliate or destroy others. They have a bad attitude, they try to make it all about being victorious over the other. They then quickly resort to name calling. Ironically, the average Muslim apologist who is watching this right now will probably react with name calling and with anger at this point. It has already happened within the first few seconds. Too many Muslim apologists have a history of severely abusive and questionable behavior, and they don't exactly clear the reputation of Islam. If Muslim proselytizers act like that, and if the image of Islam is very much in their hands, how can people be surprised that people get a very bad image of Islam? Next we have the history of Islam. Most people in the world are quite ignorant about the history of Islam. Despite that, the average person coming from a culture that has had historical interactions with Islam will learn things that are not very pleasant. Islam started out as a conquering force. It continued on its path for over a thousand years. The image of Islam is one of a major imperial force that kept attacking and attacking. While European countries are mainly presented as nations, even when we are talking about colonialism, Islam is historically represented as a religious empire whose goal it is to spread Islam and to conquer the disbelievers under different pretenses. As a result, especially since Muslims consider themselves one big nation against the others, it is no surprise that people from cultures which interacted with Islam also have a bad image of Islam. And let's face it, almost every culture has had mostly bad interactions with Islam. That can't be a coincidence. Number seven is Muhammad. Most people know that Muhammad is the prophet of Islam and they know a few things about his character. Muhammad is the most popular Muslim name, which is why in one way or another everyone hears about this name. This of course has wider implications such as that people who carry this name are partly responsible for the image of Islam. But if we come to Muhammad himself, the things that people know about him are that he was an extremely polygamous leader who constantly waged wars, who married a child, who didn't say good things about non-Muslims, and so on. 
On the other hand, Muslims are always seen enthusiastically trying to defend Muhammad and clear his name. And if Muslims are always seen enthusiastically trying very hard to defend Muhammad and his reputation, then that doesn't really leave a good impression of the problematic, controversial prophet of Islam. Number six, the Quran. While Muslims try to convince themselves, each other, and everyone else that the Quran is a beautiful, miraculous book, the best book there is, it doesn't take a lot for the average non-Muslim to learn certain things about the Quran which make them view the Quran in a bad light. Non-Muslims who hear about the Quran are quickly introduced to very problematic Quran verses about hate, intolerance, war, punishment, misogyny, virgins, and so on. And as with Muhammad, it doesn't really help that Muslims are again seen trying to enthusiastically defend the Quran with notorious phrases like, you need to read it in Arabic, you have to ask a scholar, you are taking it out of context, that word has different meanings, or you are just ignorant. I never thought I would say this, but this reminds me of a Turkish proverb, which goes roughly, where there is no fire, there is no smoke, which means that if there is much rumor and much controversy around something, then there is probably something there. Next we have women. You can try to tell people as much as you want that Islam values women, that Islam doesn't treat women differently like lesser beings. But if this is the image of Islam, then you won't really be successful with that in the world. When people look at Islam and women, especially in the West, what they see is that women are required to dress in very limiting ways, if not in very specific, oppressive ways. That they don't really have much of a say and don't really have a voice, which is why Islamic conversations are overwhelmingly dominated by men who speak for women, except for a handful of women who serve as tokens. What they see is that men work and women try to desperately take care of all the children. Men walk ahead, women follow. Domestic violence is associated with Islam and mentioned in the Quran, sanctioned in the Quran. Muslim countries have a very poor women's rights track record, and so on. You can say that Islam values women, and you can expect people to believe you, but don't expect much. Number four is the Muslim attitude. I'm sorry, but if Muslims mostly think that the entire world is against them, and if Muslims think that the non-Muslims will never like you as long as you are a Muslim, then this will naturally prime Muslims to make them perceive intercultural, interreligious interactions in a bad way and to respond accordingly. I learned from a very early age that it is us against them, that the non-Muslims don't like us, that they don't trust us, that they plot against us. And I was prepared to view everything that they do with suspicion, most often without any justification, without any reason. But I witnessed that Islamophobia accusations and claims are mostly just that. Muslims perceiving everything in a hostile way. Number three is do's and don'ts and all the rules. Islam has a lot of do's and don'ts. I would argue that Islam is by far the most controlling, the most intrusive, the most authoritarian religion. Music is haram, dancing is haram, dogs are haram, pictures are haram, alcohol is haram, pork is haram, interest is haram, gold and silk for men are haram, tattoos are haram, gender mixing is haram, love relationships are haram, questioning is haram, breathing is haram. That last one was an exaggeration, by the way. I think I have to say it, but someone else will, will be like, no, breathing is not forbidden in Islam. Praying five times every day is strictly obligatory. Fasting for a month is obligatory. Dressing a certain way is obligatory. Obeying Allah and Muhammad on everything is obligatory. Humans have very basic needs and desires as the beings that they are. It is simply very hard for the average human to accept the idea that you are supposed to give up most of the things that you like, most of the things that you want to do, and that you are supposed to live your life in a political, religious way where everything you do, from the toilet to the dinner table, is micromanaged. And you can't take a step without knowing whether a very little, a very meaningless thing that you are doing or that you are about to do is allowed or forbidden. Even Muslims vastly do not follow Islam's do's and don'ts because it is simply not doable for a human. Of course, if Muslims kept this authoritarianism to themselves, if only they themselves practiced it, or if only the person himself practiced it, that would be different. Then people wouldn't have such a dislike for Islam, a distaste for Islam because of its authoritarianism. 
But of course, that's not the case. Islam also interferes with everyone else's life. And Muslims in non-Muslim lands are forced to abide by many of the Islamic rules and laws. And let's not even get to Islam's infamous brutal punishments, such as amputations of the hand or the feet, flogging, hanging, stoning, or being thrown off a roof. Number two, terrorism. We have to say it. It is very clear that people all around the world have become more familiar in a bad way with Islam due to Islamic terrorism. If people are terrorized and killed for blasphemy, it's usually because they offended Islam. If a truck runs into people or a suicide bombing takes place, the motive is usually Islam. When people turn on the TV and hear terrorists make their declarations and shout their slogans, what people hear is Allahu Akbar and an angry tone in Arabic, accompanied by masks and flags with Arabic letters. Islamic terrorism is the most common, most widespread, deadliest form of terrorism in the world. It is everywhere. The vast majority of victims are also Muslims, but that doesn't really take away from the point. Maybe it even makes everything a little bit more disturbing on a different level. There is not much that I can say here which hasn't been said over the last few decades. The fact that we see actual people legitimately defend and justify Islamic terrorism doesn't really make things easier. Most Muslims are undoubtedly against terrorism. They fear terrorism. They hate terrorism. And they are not responsible for terrorism. But maybe they need to recognize the motivator behind terrorism and distance themselves from it, instead of even blaming that on the West. And finally, there is the intolerance and the oppression that people face at the hands of Islam. Minorities that live in Muslim countries are often voiceless and have to live very carefully. Christian minorities are often persecuted and face constant threats. The Christians of Pakistan are suffering. The Coptic Christians in Egypt are persecuted. They have to be quiet. In most Muslim countries, you better hide your religion. You are better quiet about your suffering. And you better never talk about Islam critically. Because that is punishable in most Muslim countries. On a watch list of the worst places to be a Christian, Islam is clearly dominant. Hindus and people of different religious backgrounds are mistreated and face hate and intolerance. Jews don't even really exist in the Muslim world anymore, and the prejudice and hate against Jews is globally known. All the intolerance and hate is not just something that people do, which has nothing to do with Islam. No, it is directly in the Islamic scripture, in the traditions of Muhammad, in Islamic history, and also on the tongues of believers of Islam all around the world. But hey, let's not be Islamophobic by saying something disrespectful about Muhammad. I mean, even leaving Islam is forbidden. What else can we say? This is why people dislike Islam. There is so much more that I haven't even gone into. Oh, here is a bonus that I want to add. People also dislike Islam because they can dislike Islam. Nobody has to respect Islam. Nobody has to respect any religion. There is no such obligation. People are free to respect and disrespect, to love and to hate whatever they want. And you will certainly not make people love and respect Islam by commanding and demanding that they love and respect Islam. That's the opposite of how you do it. If people don't love and respect Islam, if they dislike it, then there is probably a reason or many reasons. I hope this was clear. Islam has many problems, and when we point this out, Muslims shouldn't take this in a bad way. Maybe they should even listen to me and to others and take notes, take this as constructive criticism, look at where Islam has its shortcomings, analyze what can be done about this, or maybe they can just leave Islam like me. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like, to subscribe, and to share this video. If you don't like this video, then it's probably because you're jealous or because you know that everything that I say is the truth and you're denying it, which is why you don't like this video, which only shows again that this video is good. I will be back. Have a fantastic day and please stay away from Islam.